I just don't want you to think something. I didn't get up and get mad and run. <laughs> but I do. I, I got to. I got to go into work early in the morning, so. Which is unusual, but. We're going to sing, He Set Me Free, real fast soon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what page is that? 321. All right, let's stand and sing page 321. Rogers. Uh, I'm 
brother's wife out there is going to put her on that. Trisha Sims. Trisha Sims. Jerry Priest passed away. Yeah, that was Dennis oh. brother. Oh, okay. He, he, uncle. Hmm. Hey, wife told me Sunday or Sunday night over at church that she was passed sick. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if everybody knows you, Uncle John. I may see this person to pass away in the his family. I talked to mom on the way home from work. And she, she said, well, I ain't coming tonight. I'm, she was down with, I think, something in her leg and back, like hurt her. So, you know, her I think dad stayed on with her. She wasn't feeling real up to par. Day, so remember him. So far he's not feeling sick, he's just really tired. He just barely got home. I enjoyed the service over Jody's Sunday night. Our mm -hmm. church was well represented. Yep. Uh, that's about as good a one as I've ever in. Yep, that was a good one. Yeah. That man can preach. Yeah. <laughs> I told Sarah I'd like to be able to understand the thing. Just let him go ahead. I mean, honestly, I think. Well, I mean, he didn't say amen. Yeah. I, I did tell Sarah, I said, you know, I got to, there's three words I definitely got out of it with Spanish. That was heaven, hell, and Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I could still pick that out of it, you know. Jesus. Yeah. I could get that out of it, you know, and, and know what he was preaching on, even though it was. I didn't understand it. Interpreter couldn't hardly keep up with yeah, he it. Could. He could. I felt sorry for that guy because it's hard to keep up with me. That's a good one. Y'all remember the men I've been working around too. That's I tell you, it's been uh, there's one guy. He's, he's real outspoken, and and I, I I'm probably going to cross him up here before it's over. But he goes to church and stuff now, but. Hey, he, he pretty much told his testimony down there what time we was having a discussion in the lunchroom uh, yesterday. And so we've been on it about every day. But uh, I told Sarah, I said, I, I said, I'm going to have to invite him to church just to get him to come tell his testimony because it is a, where he came from, it's one of them, it's a good one. Kind of like the missionary, but you don't kill the preacher. Yeah, just about, yeah. About the same deal, right? <laughs> he was good. But I, you know, I hope the conversations continue to go. And, you know, there's a lot of, um, I don't know, I guess there's only three of them in that lunchroom I'm in that's supposed to be Christian and go to church. So there's seven or eight that's not. So, you hear me? Opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's been a, it, it's been a topic. Every day, you know, I thank God for that, you know, it, and it comes up a lot because it seems like every day or every few little, little bit, somebody's saying, oh, you're a pastor, or you're a preacher, or you're a minister, or, you know, they use all these different, I'm like, yeah, 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 and then it leads into something else, but, you know, just your presence being known, you make a stand for Christianity to start with, it gets somebody else because then they feel comfortable to say, Wondering about this, and some of them hard questions. <laughs> You're like, uh, but you know, it, it's still good. Remember our church? Remember when <coughs> Karen's been a tack on mud and that drywall back here and things? So let's remember them. And we'll uh, we'll get to it. We'll get all took care of. And, we we'll have some more white walls in the place. Yeah. <laughs>
struggle sometimes because anyway, I'm going to keep talking to myself. I'm trying to not do that. Anyway, um, <coughs> I really want to help her. Um, and I, I am, I'm going to help her myself, but I didn't know if it was something that anybody in the church would be um, willing to do. She doesn't go to our church, I know that, but she is elderly and other people should be willing to help her, but they're not stepping up to that job. So I thought it might make a good impression on her if we did that. But I understand completely if anybody doesn't for chance. I mean, I know a lot of us just don't have time or we don't have the physical ability. I understand that. But I thought I would mention it. And if, if anybody wants to, I guess we can, you can talk to me after church. What day does she do? Whenever somebody does it. <laughs> Remember that, too, in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Ask God for the little things, things will be. Get that took care of. <laughs> That's something we'll, uh, I know I may not be here at the end of the day, but we'll get together and discuss it. It's probably something we do. I know where there's a big box trail, right? <laughs> I'm sure it's available. <laughs> I might use it one time. That would be the ideal thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a big one, so yeah. you can put a lot of stuff in it. If, if there is something in it, it can be taken out and used and put back. Yeah, I might have to roll the Volkswagen out of it. but There's a chance it might be in it. I'm not I think sure. the Volkswagen's back in it. I'm thinking you're right, though. Be All right, let's take this for prayer and we'll just each one later in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your knowledge, your Lord, and just thanks for the Lord. Thank you for your help. We need your help. We need your help. You know, these prayer requests are only for the Lord and the God, your Lord, and the Lord, and the You can take each one of my neighbor of the week and pray your hands and let's get the deal with everything that
that's something I forgot in the ministries that we've seen Sunday night. That's the only thing that we really asked for was prayer. We did take out the donations at the end of the day for them, but, uh, in which we send them money every month, but uh, they never really... Well, really, we don't. We send them Bibles. Yeah. Yeah, we really send them the, we're sending them the Bible fund, not really the missionaries, so, or the, yeah, that's what they're talking about. We just sponsor them through Bible. Yeah. So we're really not sponsoring that, at that. We're giving materials to right. use, I guess, or Bible to use, I shouldn't say materials, but uh, definitely doing that. And Gary did express his appreciation yeah. for our continued yeah, I walked in and he said, Oh, your church is doing great. You know, just, you know, sure, you know, the Bible was going out and things and they're purchased. And, uh, and it is, it's just like one thing I did research in, you know, you think about that. And um, every time you see him, goes to the Bible. When you pay in the Bible fund, it's just Bible. There's groups out there that pay for the office people, yeah. they donate just to the office fund. But when you donate the Bible fund, it's just Bible. It ain't skimmed off the top, and and we buy forty dollars worth of Bibles. We buy fifty dollars worth of Bibles. So it's something that's you know it's good. And I'm glad there's people out there that pay for the office people to take care of that, and they donate to that. And, but it just I like the organization they have to. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, if we make a twenty-five dollar donation. Uh, it's five dollars a Bible. Is it five dollars? So it's yeah. five dollars. Yeah, so it's five dollars. So those, I mean, that's not a real expensive Bible. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sure it's just your plain Bible. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be not for That's like every month. Essentially, we buy ten Bibles for every month. Plus, we buy more. Yeah, and then we do the send them for somebody's bed or something. Like that. Like Gideon yeah. What's that? Okay. Yeah. Still the order. Yeah. Send a Bible. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think. Anybody got any uh, testimony or anything before I turn it over to Mark? I do. As my, I've got something I'm going to tell the church tonight. Then I had an appointment in Oak Hill this morning. And after that, we go through and I pulled around on the parking lot, which we had the radio on. And when I stopped, and my car doesn't do this, but when I stopped, to, that's a blessing on the two, my radio quit. When I said amen, our radio started playing again. <laughs> and my car is not programmed to do that. You know? That's awesome. I looked at the end. And, and uh, you know, that, that's something I had to share with you. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't give me a moment of silence and no extra biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you this during um, prayer requests but y'all remember a, a family member of mine there uh, I believe I believe that they're saved I really do but they have uh, really again been in the world a lot in the past few years and I just uh, they've been on my heart and mind a lot in the past few years so, so I'll just pray for that mm -hmm. I just want, I want to stand and say I love the Lord, and I want to thank God for, I know this one had a lot of prayers, and I'm so thankful that God has brought him back as far as we have, mm -hmm. because he was in bad shape, and I just thank God for it, because he's always there with us, and you know, I just thank God so much for all he does for us, you know, 
were they I mean three it's left now, you know, and I just thank God the way he took care of him and brought him back to us and and I just thank him for everything he does for us. He has been so good to me. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have him on my side, you know, and and sometimes I get lonesome and stuff sitting in that house all day long, you know, but God's always there and I just thank him so much for always being there for me and he has he's just helped me so much through so many things. I could never thank him enough if I tried to thank him enough. I never could. Yeah. But I just thank him for everything. Thank him for my family and thank him for just everything he does for us. Mm. And I need your prayers. And I just say, I, God has really been blessing my heart about uh, this youth ministry that uh, y'all let me take over. And it, it's been amazing. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love seeing more kids coming in. Uh, this past Saturday was awesome. And thank you to everyone that helped. Thank you all so much. It was uh, really awesome. And I'm just, I'm really thankful that God has uh, let me do this because there isn't much that I enjoy doing more than teaching these kids and trying to help them learn and understand things that I didn't mm-hmm. when I was their age. And I just, I love this and I, y'all just pray that every time I'm doing that, I'm just doing God's work. Mm-hmm. So y'all pray about that and I just want to pray for the Lord that put me into this ministry because it is absolutely amazing and I love it every time I get to do it. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Y'all pray. Do y'all take care. Matthew, Matthew chapter 6.
being a vessel for God. You know, and uh, like Paul says, it's no longer that I that I live, that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. You know, I, I think it's just a good example of just letting God or letting Jesus take control. You know, so and if we do that, then His will will be done. And uh, you know, that's always good. Uh, chapter six. Uh, we'll start there, and let's read. Let's read to fifteen, and uh, we'll be talking about terrible deeds and prayer. So, Bobby, go ahead. Okay. Matthew six one. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Thou goest and alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand doeth. Twenty four. Let one alms might be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward in open. Five. And when the prayer thou prayest, thou shalt be as the hypocrites are. They shall be heard for their much speech. Speak. Be not ye therefore like unto men, for your father knoweth what things ye have to do before you ask him. Nine. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive them their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, so we start out here uh, with these all the charitable deeds, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then, you know, just remember, you know, he's he's comparing the Pharisees and the Sadducees to what you should be doing. You know, just uh, kind of keep that in mind because he goes right, you know, right to them. You know, he says the hypocrites, and we know that he's called the Pharisees and the Sadducees the hypocrites all the time. They, uh, they pray in the synagogues and the streets and they pray real loud and they have all these repetitious things that they're saying all the time and you know so but um, for the, uh, the the charitable deeds you know he says do them in secret yeah what does that actually mean don't, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so in today's example, a great example of what not to do, um, YouTubers, folks that will sit there with a camera on them and walk up to a homeless person to go give them 50 bucks so that they can get 3,000 views from them. Yeah. Um, they're getting their reward already. You know. uh, if that guy needs food, give him food. You don't have to have a camera on him. Yeah. Not 
knows when you've done these things. You don't have to, to truck it again. When you do something good like that, you don't have to. Go tell everybody, well, I've done this, I've done that. Yeah. I keep Of the heart, huh? Yeah. What we've yeah. been talking about. Are we doing it because we are wanting everybody to know that we're doing it, or are we doing it genuinely because we want to help? Yeah. Well, there's a, a very interesting verse in. Uh, chapter 25 and um, let's see here I think it's verse 37 and this is this is about not letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing you know I, I think because real people that are doing this you know would answer in this way and in Matthew 26 uh, 37 it says then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? Yeah, and, he said, and he says, and the king said, uh, I will, or will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. They didn't even know. You know, that they were doing these things. So, you know, it's kind of that left hand, that right hand, not knowing what's what's going on. I think that is it. I mean, you don't even realize sometimes what you do for people. Like, I'm always scared to say this because I don't want my reward here. But, I, I, but I, I, like, I've received cards before. For uh, you know, a couple things come to mind that I've done that you know, I, I wanted nothing in return for, it. Mm -hmm. and the people were surprised by what you did do to help. Them, yeah, you know? and it's just like that, you know, that's it. You know, I I had no idea what kind of effect it was going to take on their lives by what I done. Or what I say, you know, and we experience that now. You know, there's people that there's probably people out in the world that's got saved by things that each one of you all have done that you don't even realize yeah. you've done. You know, just by I mean, it could be him. I mean, just sitting around talking about Jesus yeah. or in a crowd or yeah. or how you. Act when you are in the crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and I think that's it. I'm not. I heard this this week. One of our conversations, the old good saying. I, you know, I don't think I'm holier than thou. But what if you do go in and try to act that way? Yeah. Versus just going in. You know, it's just it's just me. And, and it's like you say, you don't not let them. Each one knows. Yeah. It's, uh, like I said, the condition of your heart, doing it in love. Mm -hmm. You know, it says here in, in you know, verse <coughs> 2 there, chapter 6, it says, that when you do your charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet. Hey, look at what I did. Yeah. They were hungry. I fed them like, like what you said there, Gabe, on YouTube. Yeah, I, I have a real problem with that. It's just, you know, here, man, take this, you know. Oh, you know, I know you're hungry. You need to sit in. Give me, me 3,000 likes, mm -hmm. and I'll make how, so much money off of it, you know, and everything. I've watched them, though. All them people they do this to, man, it is. Lights their world up. But yeah, it does. Gosh, they shouldn't do it that way. Though. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it has some. 
something in, in, in I the, think it, I think it's what the scripture says. They have their reward. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they just yeah. Uh, maybe it'll prompt someone else to do that without having a video camera. You know, I don't know. Imagine how much extra good would be done in this world if every person that needed help had a little marker over their head, like in a video game, <laughs> and you knew, hey, that person needs help. I, if I get that done, I'm going to get my reward for it. But you, you know, without having to have that marker, that's already there. You're, you're laying up what's called treasure in heaven. Yeah. Right? God sees when you do these things. You don't have to trumpet it to everyone. So anyone who needs help and will know they need help and will be able to help them, request be pleased. Yeah, and I truly believe that when we get to heaven, we'll be like those people, those, those you know, sheep, you know, and, and we'll be like, well, when Adam, you know, Adam, you said to God, well, God, when did I give someone five bucks? You know, when did I do that? When did I give them a sandwich? When did I give them the word? When when did I do all this stuff? And I don't remember it. Yeah. But he does. You know. He knows the end result of how it came about. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah, real re reward there. You know, it's not a material thing. Can well, you imagine what kind of treasure that would be? Yeah. I mean, you've made it to heaven, and you're talking with uh, number one. And he's like, Cause, you know, we do something here in the world, man. Oh, that was a good job. Or, man, Mike's playing ball again. Man, Mike, you get home run. Good job, Mike. Yeah, it makes you feel good. You know? yeah. yeah, man, I... Walk off home run in the bottom of the night. Right? I won the game, man. You know, I'm, you're the hero of the game. But you may have stayed there for God. And he said, yeah, man, but this time you was talking about this, you done it. I don't remember that. Yeah. And, and think if you had a big old list and you just kept reading things, yeah. what kind of treasure that would be. And, and, you know, this world, we always, you know, not always, but most of the time we think of material things material things and the Bible tells us that material things are going to be gone you know burned up and, every, and everything and those it's amazing that our works of just bringing people you know to salvation you know spreading the gospel that, that it's it's almost like it is a physical thing you know we've talked about that before like you know death being thrown in you know, like it's a, it's actual kind of a physical thing, you know, uh, an, an entity of some sort. But our works being those things, you know, and not being burned up, but it being rewarded to us, you know, and whatever the reward is, I you know what, I don't know, I don't care. I just want to be in the presence of God, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's it. it. Yes. 
remember to pray about that. And I mean, I know that sounds terrible, but you have to remember to pray because yeah. because your first reactions because of your emotions. Yeah, exactly. Because of your emotions. And I yes. have to I have to remember to pray. And uh, recently, someone told me that uh, somebody doesn't like me. And, uh, yeah, I know. I found that so hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, but you know. What I have to do is, <coughs> is put that aside and see what it is about me that might be giving that impression and ask God to help me correct that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and maybe it's nothing I'm doing, but it's perceived by that person. So I want that removed. Yeah. And that's very hard to do. But what if it's a wrong thing? What if it's something that you're not doing anything wrong, but they have a wrong <laughs> then, then you pray. You pray that their eyes will be open to the to the truth, mm -hmm. and you pray that you can accept it, um, that they that that God's will will take control of that. Yeah. I mean, that's very hard. It's very hard to do, and it's very hard to say. And and I'm not preaching <coughs> at someone other than me. Than saying people will do that, and if if people see that you're doing trying to do good things. They will manipulate that sometimes mm -hmm. and, and say that, you know, you're not really this or you're not really that yeah. and I don't like her or him or whatever it may be. And I, I just pray that they move me out of the way and let them see God. Yeah. Well, you, you can go back into like 43 through 48 where we talked about love and talked about our neighbor, neighbor and, and hating our enemies, you know, things like that. Yeah, and I know that. Yeah, I was, was going to agree with you. I agree with you, Teddy. Probably most people. Most people don't like criticism. But you know, the song says you're stupid if you don't. <laughs> Actually, I have the word stupid in there. But, uh, you know, um, you can't always be a doorman either. Yeah. You know. You know, I found something that I've sat here and thought whether I was going to say this or not, but. I've actually done it in my life. And there's some people and places that you're like, there's no way I'm doing that. But it's removing yourself from the situation. And, and I say that, and I, I realize that there's people, I dealt with one of my very good friends, and it was his, it was his mother. And he had to remove himself from that situation. And that's hard. Hard on him. Yeah. But now, the end result, it, it's, it's a lot better. But that was hard. That was hard for him. How did you do that? I mean, how do you remove yourself from your mother? Is that what you said? Physically, yeah. 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 Until she found, you know, you can only try so much. Especially if it's the same person over and over, creating that in you and mm -hmm. that creating those feelings again. And sometimes a short break mm -hmm. after it, you know. Yeah. So so that's like with, my, with my childhood and stuff, I went 10 years without talking to my mom. Because it's just every time I talked to her, it brought back. She was, so I just, you get to the point where you have enough and then you just kind of. Is that what Christ is wanting you to do? I mean, I'm, it's, a, it's a real question. Well, Christ should say that, uh, you know, 
um, he couldn't do, uh, what, what was it, Capernaum, he, or wherever it was, he couldn't do very many miracles because of their lack of faith. Mm -hmm. So he just left. Yeah, or Nazareth. Yeah, Nazareth. Yeah, Nazareth, yeah. Or he spoke about, mm -hmm. you know, his, even his home, uh, he couldn't perform many miracles there because none of them believed. Yeah. Yeah. He just didn't mean to answer your question. Sometimes you have to remove yourself, but that doesn't mean you remove yourself from prayer or from loving that person. Yeah. But you, but you remove yourself from that immediate physical environment. And then you pray, God give me guidance. Well, and you're you have to move yourself out of that. This is what I want to do, and say, Lord, show me, help me to do what you want me to do. But in the moment, sometimes you do have to physically remove yourself from the situation. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be years or anything like that. You yeah. can do it for three, four months, just open up. And, you know, it's even if you're being misunderstood, like yes, mm -hmm. especially if you're being. Because yeah, sometimes your emotions get in the way, and what you're trying to say is not actually being accepted. So you're just sitting there, and you're just well. If you step away from each other for a little while, and then come back, then you kind of get that understanding of you let your emotions possible. out of the way. I don't think it's possible. I mean, just because not even if I try to not be around this person, they would just talk and talk. But you just don't. Just, Stop. Stop. They would come to my house. I can't I can't deal with this right now. Uh -huh. You're just gonna have to just go and let me deal with what I gotta deal with. And I mean sometimes you gotta be mean about it. Well, you have to be firm. Yeah, yeah, you have to be. But then again, whenever they see you standing firm, they might take a different approach to yeah. it. Yeah, they see the seriousness of what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they may not be receptive in the moment to your emotions, or they may feel attacked. And, and just, That's what just doing that, yeah. it's so kind of like hitting that bully in the nose. You know, it stones them. Yeah. yeah. It's like, are you being grumpy today? Yeah, if right. you don't say anything, you're being mean. If you do say yeah. something, you're being mean. I, it's, like, it's a no-win. What is it? And it's just, it's like... That's why I said. That's why I said when I started that, and I sat here and thought about it before I said it. it it's an extremely hard road to take, mm -hmm. but it, you know it's kind of one of those things where you know I've exhausted everything that I've tried. I mean, and I'm, I'm here, and, and that's the way my friend was. I mean, he had tried everything, and you know we kind of sat down and got one of them moments where. I'm here on the app with your guy friend. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's, it's the way I see it. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be forever, but you know, and I mean, even three, three, you know, it, it come out better. In, yeah. Even three, four months can make completely like sometimes three or four days. Yeah. 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 Once they see that you're serious and you're standing on what you're doing they'll it, it, like I said it may take a couple of weeks a couple of months a couple of years but sometimes we just have to remove ourselves and sometimes, yeah, sometimes you just gotta completely mm -hmm. just, I feel like it's affecting my like my relationship with God it's like I feel like I'm That's just the human side. Yeah, I was gonna say, that doesn't necessarily come from God. Some of that comes from your own emotions and your own psyche. But if you if you got something sitting there telling you that this is what you need to do, I think that's God telling you this is what you need to do. Step down my wall at work. I have a whiteboard that I have lots of sayings, but one of them is about boundaries. The reason the saying is on the board is because my staff realize I have no boundaries. Um, I say yes to everybody that asks me anything. But the saying is, boundaries are not about what they do, it's about what you do. You can't change another person.
person, you can all change how you respond to them. And God can help you with that. God can change them. Believe me, I know. He can change that other person. He can change their heart. He can make them receptive to what you're saying. But the fact that you're so upset about it tells me that you need boundaries in that situation. I, and I, I feel like I've opened the door for the devil to attack me, too. Yes. He, he really, it's just a battle for my mind. Because it's like you got a sore, and he's going to yeah. just keep poking at it. When, and it says in the Bible, it says, if at all possible, which I like that part, to live, um, and it depends on you, to live at peace with everyone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that peace means you're not physically in their space. And I wouldn't call you all the time. I'm going to show up here to work. All right, I'll come around. You got to keep it up. That could be a hassle. I was just looking in Proverbs chapter 15, uh, 1 through 7. Uh, a soft answer turneth the way back, but grievous words stir anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge of color, but the mouth of force forth out force. Eyes of the Lord are every place, beholding the evil and the good. The wholesome tongue is the tree of life, but the perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. <coughs> a fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is fruit. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, and in the remnants of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the fool is Yourself helps you helps you get to that point where you understand that not only is mousetrap there, you know what they're going to say to try to get you to trip that mousetrap, mm -hmm. and then the next time you do talk to them, you're, you're cognizant of what's sitting in front of you, and you're able to not put your finger in the trap. Yeah. And maybe it is that I'm trying to make some new people happy. <laughs> Is 
is not intentionally cause of hurt and necessarily disobedience. You guys talk to her, give her all the help you can. <laughs> Staying in that gap. in the five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here we go again with the uh, the hypocrites. It says, don't pray like them. Standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that everybody can see them. They like to be heard. They like to be heard, don't they? Jesus says, they got their reward. Struggle with this every time I'm asked to pray out loud. That is, it's always in the back of my mind. As I'm, I don't, I, I mean, I, I feel like I pray freely, but I'm aware that I don't want to say something that's going to make it sound like I'm lifting myself up. Yeah. But I mean, I really do struggle with praying out loud. Thank you, Daddy. Um, okay, I'm calling you, Sandy. No, it's okay. But no, you know, Betty, I'm not going to apologize. Because I ask God to leave me when I leave that service. Mm -hmm. yeah. and that's, uh, oh no, that's please don't. And I need to do that. I mean, and I know I need to do that because it it strengthens me. But I always have that worry, I guess, that I'm the words that I choose. Yeah. But honestly, I pray like I talk and I just say what comes out of my mouth. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. But then when I had to pray on the plane, and I, again, I'm not boasting. I thank God that I got to do that four times. Mm -hmm. I was I was more comfortable because I've done it here, and it's much easier to do it in front of people that you know love you. And not that the soul on that plane was listening to me besides Gail that was sitting beside me. But, again, I was worried, not worried is the wrong word, but aware that people are hearing the words that come out of my mouth, and I don't yeah. want to make it seem like I'm holier than thou because... Sometimes I can tell before it comes out of your mouth. Yeah. Call it on me. 
I never can. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Then I can tell when he's going to call on you. No, I can. When I'm, I'll be at the piano and he'll say, Lynn, will you open us in prayer? And I'm like, what, me? What? <laughs> what am I going to say? <laughs> so I don't. I don't have any time to prepare anything. <laughs> so we're not time, supposed to prepare. No, we're not. The experience I've had most of the time when someone calls on me to pray, I can feel it beforehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the Holy Spirit. You can. You know, oh, yeah. I, I, I think that's true. Yeah. I'm I feel like that's true, like you just said, because there are times in the morning, like, I really have something on my heart, and I just really want to pray, and then Teddy will can't keep on me to pray. Yeah. It doesn't always happen, but many times right. it will. And I don't think about what I'm going to say when you call on me to pray. So. Or one other thing is, I'm afraid I'm going to leave something out and be like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Always. They just say, oh, hold on, we're not done. <laughs> <laughs> You know, praying is having a conversation with God. That's exactly yeah. right. Like, yeah. and, and it should be the most natural thing we do. Maybe I meant to tell Stephanie something and I forgot to. But I'll tell everybody. Uh -huh. you know, so. It's like whenever I pray in my head, everything golden is good. <laughs> but whenever it starts coming out of the mouth, I'm just, I just. Another thing that really helps with that is when you, when you close your eyes, and like when I stand up, I close my eyes when I pray still. I close my eyes and I actually think of God. Like, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm not thinking of anybody around. Like, I'm not, I don't care what Jimmy thinks. I don't care what I'm Donna thinks so. of him or whatever. I'm just like, okay, Lord, this is me and you, and I'm talking. And I want you to really, I want you to help these people here in this room. I said, if you could, if you could take the the um, focus off of yourself and put it on God. Yeah. I think yeah. that really helps. When you have a conversation with someone, mm -hmm. the conversation goes better if you have it. chapter or two to them, and then we'll let them do their prayers. we we'll let them do it each individual. And then whenever they're done, we ask them, who else do you want to pray for? And they both have a list. <laughs> <laughs> just, well, we're a bit shy. Or <clears throat> well, do you know, Ron, their hearts. Do you know, they pray. Well, it's, it's because they haven't gotten exposed to criticism for people who have made fun of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they don't think about it. Like whenever they stumble. Or like they're trying to think of somebody. I'm like, okay, who else? Who, who else? They don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so they're just like, uh, and then they'll start naming off stuff. And then if they go like, then that has a bad habit. Of, she'll get like halfway through her list and she'll go, like, uh, and start all over. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All over. I want to be the first of the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Jeremy just learned from Jenna. She's teaching me yeah. to pray. <laughs> I, then, I catch myself doing the same thing. What's that? Yeah. But this church is in here. And I, 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 you know, I know I'm not perfect. But I don't care. God knows it already. Yeah. You know? And everybody here, you know, if I mess up, they're not going to talk about it. I mean, I feel like we're going to pray for them. You know, yeah. You know? and I, I just don't worry about it here, but I have been in church before. You know, I hate doing that. Yeah, but you know we're talking about public prayer here, and you know we do have um, like the instances where we have to pray. Teddy calls on us to open the service or pray for the offering or whatever, you know. But um, and that that's fine. And and back in the 
in, in these times here, they had the same thing, you know. But what he's talking about is they're just out there, you know, showing off, basically, yeah. Just saying a bunch of stuff that doesn't mean anything. And the, the point that I want you uh, to understand is that, you know, Jesus says, he says, but when you, uh, when, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, I guarantee you that when I pray at home by myself, it's a lot different than praying over the altar, you know, or praying over, you know, opening the, the church center, you know, the services and stuff. You know, so that's what he's talking about. He's talking about the heart. Yeah, this I is, always imagined, Mike, that it was when when I've read this scripture, and I've I've actually seen some street preachers, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. But I always imagined when he talked about in this scripture that it would be someone standing on the corner saying, "Look at me, I am praying. Yeah. I look how good I'm praying, yeah. and I'm saying things loud." And mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's the way I hear that when yeah. when they talks about that, and I feel like. When I talk, I think my best prayers is when I'm driving. Yeah. And yeah. It, feel, it feels like, yeah. and, and sometimes I go faster when I'm praying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lord, I'm going to save my eyes. <laughs> I've never had to use that when I've been pulled over or anything. But I do feel like that my best conversations are then because um, it's just God and I in the car. You know, that's just the two of us. And I, yeah. and I, I really enjoy those times. So, yeah, I totally agree to a point next time myself or something. I know it's that I'm just, I'm just talking. Just like, I talk out loud to God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just have a conversation. So, if you pass yeah. somebody and, and they see you talking, they think you're either on the phone or somebody's <laughs> with you. But I mean, I just feel like it's, that God's right there with me. Yeah, I used to have to drive it like an hour, hour and a half of work and stuff like that. And I'll tell you what, I've uh, probably come up with. Most of my sermons. Yeah. Right, yeah. right then. That, I preach really good sermons. Yeah. In my I do too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mostly to myself because I, I don't know what it is, but it just seems like there's this open channel between me and God. You know, yeah. He's just feeding me and feeding me. Uh, well, I'll tell you, Adam mentioned something the other day. I have been, I don't know what it is on Facebook if people are cloning you or what it is, but, you know, they'll hack or whatever it is. And, uh, as many times that it's happened to me, like in, since July, Adam said we need to figure out a way to make this a witness. <laughs> so I've decided to every time that happens or to a friend to pray specifically that that person that's doing that yeah. will see what they're doing, the harm that they can do to someone. And I'm asking for God to, to intercede in that. Yeah. And I've noticed that since I've started yeah. praying for that, it's not happened as much. <laughs> and I, I mean, it scared the devil. Yeah, I mean, I really think, I mean, I think when I turned my focus away, mm -hmm. I was able to let God hear it. Yeah. You know? So with these so, passages, does it come down to target audience? What's that? With these passages that, about praying, does it mostly come down to your target audience? Like, who are you praying to? Are you praying to God? Or are you praying so that people see you? Yeah. Right? Uh, if you're just doing it so that people see you, you're, you're missing who you're trying to talk to at that point. It's not going any further than help to see. Yeah. And then, we'll go ahead and close there, but then, uh, like I said, we're going to get down to 9 through 13 and uh, he's going to give us kind of a model for you know or give us the model prayer of what we should you know be saying so. but um, anyone have anything else well, I was going to say that's a little distracted but <laughs> it's a good distraction <laughs> um, I was saying uh, a really big part of prayer too is yeah. Mm -hmm. Since our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. So that's part of praise. I feel like it's starting out with praise. And it's, if, you, if you go through and, and look at the model prayer, it tells you what to pray next. You know, do mm -hmm. um, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will. So asking God what his will is. Acknowledge.
Who's, who you're Church speaking to. Yeah. And then give Girl, him praise. And I feel like that I've learned in the last four years how to praise God better. Mm -hmm. And to, and to, to pray giving him uh, honor from the beginning. Instead yeah. of just wanting to go, oh, God, how you? It's, you know, praise the Lord and thank you. When we were praying that, oh God, help me, we're focusing on all the negative things or all the things we want or all the things we wish were better. But when you start praising God, your focus changes to how great thou art. Thank you for all you've done for me. Thank you that I'm in the situation that I'm in. And we know he uses everything, the good and the, or the, the things we think are bad, he uses for good. And if we praise him for whatever's going on, Praise you for this trial. Praise you for this person. That's, it's hard to be angry when you're praising God. It is hard to be angry when you're praising God. I have to tell y'all a story. Okay. Sorry. I have to tell you a story. I just remember. You guys know I've asked for prayer many times for the mean girls at work. One of the mean girls at work manipulated me into the job that I have now in 2017. 2017. I didn't realize it until yesterday that she had manipulated me into this great job that I love, that God has used me, and I've been able to witness to so many people. But what occurred to me was, God turned what she meant for evil, because at the time she manipulated me into the job, mm -hmm. it was a dead-end job, nobody wanted to do it, we went a whole year without anybody doing the job, and the person before that sat in her office and didn't do anything. Well, that is just not me. Um, and God has blessed me in this job so much. I really do love it. And he has put me in contact with people that I never would have been in contact with. He has enlarged my territory. Um, I'm looking at Sebi because she knows what I'm talking about there. But I feel like God used what she intended to be harm. He turned it for good. But I've spent a lot of hours thinking bad of her and bemoaning the fact that I have to work with her. But, like I said, it didn't even occur to me until yesterday that she had manipulated me into this job. And it wasn't anything she did yesterday. So I just deal with her now. I say later on her, honestly. They'll say, well, what do you call me? She's the reason I have this job. <laughs> no, I did not. I haven't seen her since then. I should. Yes, I will. I won't see her until next week. I want to say one more thing, too, about praising God. That, um, and I, I love that you find good things. Those names and all the things that God is, and I 
Jesus God is present. Just remind you that He is everything. I mean, I think when you do that and you're praising God, it helps you to get that attitude of joy in your heart instead of, because if you start focusing on all the negative and you're asking God, please, God, please do this, and you start kind of focusing, it pulls you down. But, but God wants us to, to have it all joy and, you know, all the things that you don't have joy. Hey, you got the announcements here. Yeah, but... 